Do you want to be in the video? Do you want to be in the video, my little baby dog? I look at the mush. Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm just going to be doing like a coffee tea chat thing. Today I'm drinking the orange bubbly sparkling water. I'm trying to get more into drinking sparkly water because I like carbonation and I haven't been the biggest fan of sparkling water before and I don't want to always drink like a Coke or a Pepsi or something soda-like, you know, like something that's a soda every time that I want the burn. Does anybody else like the burn of like Coke and stuff? It's weird. But yeah, so I'm trying this. I like it. It's pretty good actually. It's pretty refreshing. I really like White Claws and like alcoholic seltzers. So I think maybe like since I liked those, I'm kind of getting more into the non-alcoholic ones. So that is what I'm drinking. But yeah, today I'm going to be doing an assumptions, questions about me, get to know me a little bit coffee chat video so go get your coffee tea wine if you want to cocktail I don't really care and I'm gonna drink my bubbly while I answer some of your questions and assumptions you guys have for me my dog's staring at me <laughs> anyway so the first question is how old are you I am 24 years old I uh, don't feel 24 not the 24 is old but I have realized that after I turned 21 I pretty much don't feel like my actual age anymore which I guess is a good thing like I think I'm mature which is good but I don't feel like I'm getting older right now I'm sure that that will change but just a random fact next question is what's a hobby you have outside of YouTube I like to sing play piano write songs uh, I like to karaoke a lot <laughs> Thomas and I are VIP members at the uh, karaoke lounge down the road and I have to admit that I really like going there. We're a regular. Of course they're doing social distancing and all that kind of stuff so just so you know and they disinfect everything in between everybody's turn. But yeah I really like anything music wise and anybody in my life who's actually in my life knows this about me. It's it's just a thing. <laughs> so the next question is who's my favorite YouTuber? So I've mentioned a couple of times who like my favorite YouTubers are on my channel, but my favorite YouTuber, I have a couple. I really like Jessica Braun. I've talked about her. I don't know. I just really, really like her and her vibe and her content. She's really like chill. I'm always in the mood to watch her videos. Like I don't need to be in a specific mood to watch her videos. I feel like we're just friends hanging out. We'd be friends if we knew each other, I think. I hope. <laughs> I also really like Taylor Wynn. Um, she's kind of got that similar vibe and she's a little edgy and I like it and I like her content. She tries out like a bunch of different foundations, which I think is awesome. She used to have really bad cystic acne. So that was helpful to me when my acne was really, really bad. I mean, I didn't have like huge cystic acne, like I had more moderate, but I did have consistent acne and she really helped there and she still does. I like all of her recommendations. I also really like Angie from Hot and Flashy. She's an older YouTuber. I hate saying older. I mean, more mature. All of it sounds offensive. She's just older than me. She's like 58 or 59 or something like that. She looks great for her age and I love her vibe because she's older. So she like has a family. She's really chill. She gives you great tips and she tries all these different things like LED light masks that are different from like anybody else that I watch. And it makes me want to like try an LED light mask for maybe acne or something like that. So yeah, those are my favorite YouTubers as of right now. I have YouTubers that I like and watch a lot, but those are the ones that I consistently watch like every single upload, every time they upload, right at the time they upload pretty much, or at least the same day or the next day. <laughs> the next one is a little more personal. It's not overly personal, but it says, what is something you learned once you got married that you weren't expecting from marriage? I mean, I don't know, uh, I guess like, the fact that you have to make decisions together 
like all decisions. I mean, that is something that I knew, like I was cognitively aware that we were going to have to like, you know, make financial decisions together, life decisions, you know, we even make like where we're gonna eat decisions together, you know, all that kind of stuff. But like, I mean, before we both got married to each other, like we were able to do that stuff by ourselves. So once we got married, it was kind of like, oh no, I have to like address this person about like a purchase I need to make or, you know, like how we're gonna pay for car maintenance or, you know, fixing our cars. So like I had my alternator go out and obviously that's not a cheap job. So we had to figure out how we wanted to pay for that. Did we wanna put it on a credit card or did we not? Like, I didn't realize how much we were going to have to, uh, conf like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We were going to have to not confront. But you know, like we're gonna have to talk to each other and make decisions like like that. And also, um, I'm a really bad sharer <laughs> of food, specifically food. And Thomas grew up with two other siblings, so sharing food <laughs> wasn't a problem for him. It's really it makes me sound so snobby, but I've had to get used to like the the food I buy is not just the food for me. It's all like it can be the food for him as well. But he touches my Reese's and we have a problem because Reese's are my favorite. <laughs> But that's what makes me sound snobby, but I guess sharing and really having to consult, that was the word I was looking for earlier, to consult each other on decisions and all that kind of stuff. So we know that we're making the best decision and we're, you know, unified, we're, a, you know, a united front, you know, so that way when we have kids, if we're blessed enough to have kids, we will consult each other with that kind of stuff and then able to make decisions in regards to like grounding and all that kind of stuff, as well as like house purchases. So. Yeah, I mean, I think I was cognitively aware of it, but I wasn't really sure how much it was going to entail. And like I said, we even sometimes have to consult each other about where we want to eat because we're both pretty uh, go with the flow. We're not picky. We're very like easy to please. I'm thirsty. Hold on. <laughs> we're very easy to do things with to go to eat with because we're very like whatever food you want is fine. We don't care. So yeah, there've been a couple of times where we're like, well, what do you want to eat? I don't care. What do you want to eat? I don't care. So it like takes forever. And then finally we're like, oh, we'll just go over to the Mexican restaurant that's over there because it's the first thing I saw. So yeah, I feel like that was a really long try not answer, but <laughs> basically having to consult with like big decisions, general decisions, and also like sharing food. <laughs> that's a me problem, not a Thomas problem. The next question, and then we'll get into the assumptions after I'm done with the questions, is what's something you wish more people knew about you? Um, I mean, I would say because I have an online presence somewhat. I mean, I'm not like huge or anything like that. Uh, you know, you only see part of who I am. I'm very like, oh, here's makeup. Here's a bunch of lifestyle things. Here's like my five favorite healthiest snacks and stuff like that. But like, you don't really see like who I am outside of that context. So I would say I wish more people maybe knew that I always tried to be very thoughtful and considerate of others. I think a lot of people in my life, like in my actual life would say that I'm pretty kind. This makes me sound conceited, I feel like. I'm not trying to be conceited, but I think that compassionate and kind and like thoughtful are things that I wish more people knew about me. But like, you know, I try to portray who I really am in real life on the camera, but I can't show you everything because I can't just go around with a camera all my life. But yeah, that's the answer to that question. So the next one is what's a place you'd love to travel I want to travel a lot of different places. Uh, the number one place that I would like to travel if I could right now would be Italy because that was where Thomas and I were supposed to go on our honeymoon. And of course, if you haven't heard about the giant fiasco of what was our wedding, um, you can go check those videos out. Uh, we had to postpone our wedding, we had to cancel our honeymoon, and then we ended up doing just a little destination wedding slash honeymoon to Aruba and it was very socially distanced and like safe and everything. We took all the precautions, but yeah, um, we didn't get to go to Italy and it was like to go to the Amalfi Coast and Positano and that area, not like just Rome or anything like that. And I've been dying to go to Italy. And so I was really bummed out when we had to cancel that. Um, of course, I would love to go there whenever we are able to, that would be great. Preferably before kids, just so we could, you know, enjoy it by ourselves, not have to have somebody watch like our kid or kids over here while we were gone or have to take them because they'd probably be relatively young and Italy I feel like is more of a couple-y kind of trip like that kind of you know what I mean I mean kids can go to Italy too but it's more exciting for couples 
maybe, I don't know. <laughs> so we're on to the assumptions now. So <laughs> somebody asked, or somebody assumes that I am obsessed with stuffed animals. No. <laughs> I'm guessing that she asked this because the first video I filmed when we moved back to Birmingham or Chelsea, which is an outskirt of Birmingham, uh, you could see a bunch of stuffed animals on my old childhood bed, which is over there now. I Those are gone, but like there was like a bunch from like my childhood. So I'm guessing that's maybe why she's asking or maybe it's just a vibe I give off. I don't know. I'm not obsessed with stuffed animals. Um, I think they're fine. <laughs> I used to be when I was little, uh, but you know, now I'm, I'm more obsessed with real animals, but yeah. Next assumption is that I love dogs. True, I do love dogs. I have a little munchkin over there on the bed. I'll bring her over in a second because she's very cute. And I've got Macalus. I call, his name is Mac, but I like, you know, exaggerate their names sometimes. Like she's like Bebe, he's Macalus. Obviously that's not their names. I mean, you totally could name your dogs that, but that's, anyway, I got on a tangent. But yeah, no, I love dogs. Um, I'm not really a cat person. I don't understand cats. We don't. We don't vibe with each other. We don't understand each other at all. I've had really weird experiences with cats. Um, not like weird, but like a cat said it and like the cat like attacked me and it it was really weird and like jumped on me and clawed me and it was really weird. So I like dogs. I'll show you Bailey. <laughs> this is Bailey. Um, if you haven't seen her before, I introduced her in my Vlogmas series that I did. <laughs> She's mad because I woke her up from a nap. But she is my little girl. She is six months old now, and she really hasn't grown that much. Like, her head looks really big right here. But... <laughs> but look at the camera, baby. But, yeah, she is honestly the best dog. Um, I mean, Mac is also, like, the best dog. because, But he's, like, been trained to be the best dog. She, like, pretty much came out of the womb like this. She's very sweet and cuddly and <laughs> really well behaved. Um, <laughs> we really haven't had to do much training with her because she automatically sat when she was born. She's very sweet. She doesn't bite. She doesn't chew things. She's gonna go to sleep. But yeah, she is the best. I love Mac, but he's outside and he's not very photogenic. She's not being very photogenic right now either, but she usually is. You want to go back to sleep? Thanks for being in my video. I love you. So yeah, I love dogs. <laughs> so the next assumption is that I'm really into doing makeup. True, I uh, am into makeup. It is a big part of my channel and it's pretty much just always been a big part of my adult life. Like in high school, I kind of started getting into it but I didn't really know a whole lot. And um, I really got into it mainly because I had pretty bad acne and I wanted to cover it up. And so then I started working on like getting into more skincare, but yeah, I love makeup. It's a big thing I like to do to kind of relax myself. Sometimes I just do it to chill myself out. <laughs> Sometimes I get a little bit hyped up and I need to relax. So I do makeup. I like to experiment with makeup. I love, you know, buying new makeup, trying new makeup. That's a lot of what my content is. Of course, I like lifestyle stuff too. I'm getting into that more on my channel. But yeah, I really love makeup. <laughs> Someone assumes that I want to do YouTube full time if possible. Yeah, I would say that's a pretty safe assumption. I would think it was really cool if I was able to do YouTube full time. I know people, I don't personally know people, but I know of people who like do it full time and they're able to like see their kids more and stay home with their kids. And that would be really nice. But I think there's a lot of like pros to me being able to do that if that were like in the plan for me. I would love for that to be in the plan for me. I work for that, but I do YouTube right now for a hobby and I'm kind of working towards the possibility of full time um, because, you know, I could spend more time with any potential kids I have. I can be earning a living at the same time and I could be doing something that I really love. So I think that the pros in that case, um, at least right now, definitely outweigh the cons. So that would be great if I was able to do that. Another person assumes that I'm an only child. It's true. Do I give off? Do I give off that vibe? <laughs> because I am definitely an only child. Like I said earlier, I have a problem sharing food. I don't have a problem sharing food with people in general, just Thomas, because he's like, he eats everything. He's like an anteater. 
I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I am an only child. I liked being an only child, but I would have liked to have a sibling. I'm sure people with siblings out there are like, no, you don't. But like, honestly, being an only child is not all it's hyped up to be. I know a lot of people are like, oh, you get all the attention. Yeah, but you get all the attention. Sometimes you don't want all the attention, at least not me. Uh, so yeah, another assumption is that I don't suffer from anxiety. That is false. I do. I would say I have moderate anxiety. I mean, it's not anything to where I think I'm depressed or anything like that, but I have like anxiety that fluctuates and I've had like situations in my life that have made me more anxious now. Um, and like more anxious with like things in general. I think I'm a bit of a cyberchondriac. Uh, if that makes sense. Like if I think, oh, this is a weird symptom of whatever, then I'll look it up and it'll be like, oh my gosh, you have blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm dying. But I'm not a hypochondriac, but like, I think my anxiety kind of fuels like little things like that, like my cyberchondriac thingy, uh, cyberchondriac, I think that's what it's called. It's like when you're only a hypochondriac when you look up symptoms online. Pretty sure that's the right definition. But um, yeah, I also have anxiety about daily life, school, finances, graduation, trying to grow my YouTube audience and subscribers and views. I put a lot of pressure on myself and I compare myself a lot because I want to succeed on this platform and I feel like I'm not succeeding as fast as I would like to um and I compare myself a lot to lots of different people uh people I don't know mostly and um you know I'm like well they have more views than I do and I can't figure it out because I make all this content and I try to work really hard and I put a lot into the editing and the da -da 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 -da. and then of course I compare like my body to people on Instagram which is ridiculous we all do it but we know we shouldn't but we do anyway. Um, and then of course I just have daily anxieties about, you know, everyday stuff. So yeah, I would say I have anxiety. I could get more into the details about that in a different video if you would want me to, to kind of like tell you what I do to kind of get through the anxiety. I wouldn't say keep it at bay because it doesn't stay at bay. Like it fluctuates a lot high and low. But yeah, if you wanted to see a video about that, I would gladly make it for you, but I'm not gonna talk about it too much in this video. But yes, I actually do suffer from anxiety. Somebody else says that I want lots of kids. Although I would count it as a blessing to have lots of kids, <laughs> I only want two. Thomas and I both agreed on this because he has two siblings, which means there are three kids in his family and I'm an only child. So we basically found the median and we're like, all right, so if I'm an only child and he's, you know, the middle child, then we would like two, if possible, one of each gender. We've picked out names already. We picked out names like, <laughs> when we first started dating. <laughs> we didn't think we were gonna get married or anything. <sighs> I'm glad that worked out for us. <laughs> I do want two kids. If I were blessed with more, I would be okay with it. Um, I'm a Christian, so I would I would say that was God's plan. Because <laughs> it is, in my belief system. If somebody assumes that I am indecisive. That is true. <laughs> I'm extremely indecisive. I don't make decisions easily. Like I said, making a food decision between Thomas and me is hard. We're both indecisive. Like, I'm like, I don't really care. What do you want? I don't really care. I'm not good at making like random decisions. Like I balayaged my hair a couple weeks ago. I have a video on that. And it took me uh, six months to finally do that. I was debating it and I was like, I don't know. I don't want it to get ruined. Mm. And it turned out really good or whatever. And I would do it again. I probably will like keep getting it like touched up or whatever. And so, but I was like, sure that something bad was gonna happen. I've had weird luck. So like, if I have weird luck in an area, then I'm indecisive because I'm usually scared of the results, which is usually when my anxiety kicks in. Another assumption is that I hate drama. Yes, I do hate drama. And oftentimes I find myself in it or viewing it in a, like, I find myself too close to it and I don't like to be like, I would say that I'm a dramatic person to an extent. Like I'm a girl, I'm, goofy I'm moody whatever but like I don't like severe drama and I find that like it's all kind of all around me and it's annoying and I don't like it <laughs> um but I try to avoid it I'm obviously not very good at avoiding it but I do try to avoid it because I do hate drama the last assumption is that I am sensitive but not in a bad way so I'm assuming you mean in a way like in a bad way being like that you know I'm too sensitive in arguments or something I don't know but um, actually I am sensitive on all different levels. Um, <laughs> I'm sensitive when it comes to just like, you know, understanding people and their situations. Once again, I'm very compassionate. 
I'm very um, understanding, considerate. I try to be accommodating to people, but I'm also, I can be too sensitive. So like if Thomas can say something and I'll take it the wrong way. That has a lot to do with my, my anxiety and insecurities, which I'm working on. He's aware of that and he's trying to help me with that. But it does cause somebody head sometimes, which usually it can just be minor bickering. We don't usually get into an argument about it. He's like, why are you so sensitive? And I'm like, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I can be sensitive in all areas in a good way, in a bad way. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit the notification bell down below and please subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And if you do want to see more videos like this, please let me know in the comments. And by the way, I always forget to say this, make sure you're following me on all of my socials, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Actually, I am on TikTok. I'm not very good at it, but I'm trying to figure it out. But Instagram and TikTok is at monacana96 and then facebook is monica northcutt i put those on the screen at the end of the video so you can see those i hope you guys have a great rest of your day and i'll see you in the next video bye mm -hmm.